What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple and the Apple Watch. Don't call it the iWatch because an extra syllable makes a difference. Look at how happy Tim Cook and company were. They were so happy. Now, when I first saw it, I thought it's not round, but it looks good, better than I thought it would. The numerous wrist straps, sizes, and styles really give a unique personal feel that other smartwatches really haven't captured yet, and it actually looks pretty nice. But then it also kind of looks like the Samsung Galaxy Gear, just fine-tuned, polished, and made with more precision and care. I'm sorry, guys, someone had to tell you. Now, the best thing about this gadget by far is its unique user interface using the digital crown. The worst part of the UI, calling it a digital crown. Apple, you're not tricking us. It's okay. You can call it a dial. Now, they're focusing on the fact that it's an accurate timepiece, and it's going to be great for fitness, so you can do this thing like this guy. The calories you've burned, that gives you the best overview of how active you are. And then there's this. Because you wear it, we invented new intimate ways to connect and communicate directly from your wrist. Excuse me, Tim. Is um, there something that you know that I don't know? And with digital touch, we've developed an entirely new way for you to connect intimately with others. You can get someone's attention with a gentle tap. You can send a, a quick sketch. Or you can even share something as personal as your own heartbeat. Okay, so it's a minimum $700 to share my heartbeat with my lady or my buddies. I'm totally in. Now, I'm messing with you all, but I went into the keynote wondering if Apple could convince me that I really need a smartwatch, and they still haven't. Now, there's a lot of people that will always want Apple's newest shiny toy, and I'm one of them as long as I actually have a reason to use that toy. Now, the Apple Watch starts at $349. I repeat, starts, and that's for the smaller women's size, so if you're a guy, you probably want the full-size watch. That will cost more. And then, if you're going to get that 18-karat gold Apple Watch edition for your boo, that's going to be at least $500, but at least the jewelry box it comes with doubles as a charger. Now, I know you can use it to control your Apple TV. It's water resistant, but not waterproof. You can send walkie talkie like messages, and there's a lot more to learn until it's released in 2015. Oh, and this. It's a new, innovative, intimate way to communicate directly from your wrist. Yeah that. But here's how I look at the Apple Watch. You're either thinking, this is Apple's newest tech masterpiece and I have to have it, while ignoring that this watch still requires an iPhone and there was no mention of battery life, but early reports are saying about a day. I will buy it to try it out and dig into it, but I still don't see myself using this every day. If I'm wrong, I'll let you know, but I'll wait until the next generation. And before we go, just like we've done in the past, we'd like to have a moment of silence for the dear friend that we lost at this most recent keynote. <sighs> you will be missed, iPod Classic, with uh your soft edges and one of a kind click wheel. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. Now, I wanna know what you thought about the Apple Watch. Send me your emails to theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong and we'll post some of them in next week's show. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you all next time for another bite of the Apple.